Good morning, I'm Ed Pozzuoli, CEO of Trip Scott, and with me today is Phil Purcell. Phil uh, ran the boat show in Fort Lauderdale this year, a, a fabulous boat show, congratulations on that. Ed, thanks, and thanks for having us here. So talk about the boat show, just tell us a little bit of overview, why is the Fort Lauderdale boat show so unique? So you know, it's in its 62nd year, we've had three different promotional companies we've worked with this year when uh, Informa acquired the rights four years ago. Uh, again, you have a global leader that does over 500 trade exhibitions around the globe. This year, we took last year's proof of concept, working through COVID, working through solutions, following guidelines, applied them to the 2021 show, and what we saw was uh, results that were no one else has ever seen in the industry across the globe. Give us a little snippet about the impact and, and how did the boat show go from both the economic standpoint and just from an enjoyable time had by all. Sure. So if you, if you go back again, 62nd year, 2019 were record numbers, record attendance, record economic. And so economically to the state was a billion three economic impact. A, oh, wait, wait, wait. A billion three. Billion three. I didn't billion. want you to move past that so quick bigger than any Super Bowl times one and a half. So, uh, and it, more importantly, it stays, the residual stays for the other 360 days a year, which is a $9.7 billion industry in Broward County. But going back to those numbers in 19, record attendance, uh, record sales, 500, or 715 million, 143 million a day. We pushed through those numbers this year, both in attendance and in sales. Well, Thomas Marine Associates, who has uh, done the industry over the decades in terms of economic impact, will release a study here in the next 45 to 60 days. And I think everyone will be quite impressed with that. So you think you did better than 2019? Without question. And the excitement in the boat show this year was over there. The excitement was people were ready to have a good time, look at the boats, buy boats, talk about the boats, all kinds of things over there. It was a fabulous atmosphere. So again, it's the biggest B2B, B2C show, in-water boat show in the world, bar none. Describe that a little bit more in detail. B, B2B, B2C. Yeah. So business to business, there's no, no greater uh, recreational boating show in the world. And B2C combined, there's no greater recreational boating show in the world. Then you add the 1,100 boats in attendance, the world-class entrepreneurs that fly in. You know, 50% of the attendees are from Florida. Uh, 40 percent is domestic and 10 percent is other. The borders were closed this year and so we uh, the impact from the Europeans was a little light in terms of them being able to come here but again their companies count on this show. Perfect example, Ferretti was offloading nine boats, eight boats, uh, first day of the show because of the supply chain issues and stuff and just getting into the port. So they showed up late. There was a big gap for most of the day on the first day but they showed up because the commitment that they need for their Italian workforce uh, is, is dependent on this show. And the domestic response outside of Florida, people from the Northeast, all over the country came. What was the showcase for South Florida in a certain sure. sense? Sure. So when you think, ask Mark Gale and the FBOs around there, in addition to the commercial airlines, call Rufus up at FXE. Uh, they were up 35, 40%, guarantee you. And then when you think of the entrepreneurs, the C-suite that comes here and the founders of these companies, whether it's a tech company, whether it's, you know, Tillman Fertitta with Landry's. He owns the Houston Rockets, Landry's, uh, majority shareholder at DraftKings. He was here, you know, with his new boat that he built over in Holland, beautiful boat, 253 footer, and celebrating the fact of what it is to be an entrepreneur in America at the end of the day and creating all the jobs that he does. Uh, but equally important, next to him was a guy by the name of David McNeil, who which took residence in Fort Lauderdale, owns a company called WeatherTech. All the products are made in the United sure. States. Great entrepreneur. And he now calls Fort Lauderdale home. Well, for a lot of Florida being open, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've had some transplant, but it's a great place to showcase our, our South Florida area, right? I mean, for, for everybody who's been sort of stuffed up in their house for the last year and a half or so. Well, we're hearing about it in all the sectors, right, where people are saying, heck with this or heck with that. They're moving from states that were closed. Florida did a tremendous job keeping people safe. And again, you look at the, we were 28th, I think, in terms of uh, deaths in comparison. We're also the third largest state in the nation. They have a huge elderly population. But the people, the entrepreneurs paid attention and they're moving here, they're moving their businesses here. If you look at the acquisitions in our industry, there was over 700 million just in two yards that were acquired, one in Palm Beach, one in Fort Lauderdale, but over two billion in acquisitions during COVID between Fort Pierce and Miami of our industry. Just tremendous. What's the future hold for the boat show? I think it's all, you know, a blue sky opportunity at the end of the day. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is the refit, repair capital of the world, the yachting capital of the world, and it's the hub between Palm Beach and Miami and the yards that are up the river here, the workforce that's been created here over the decades. It's why it's a $9.7 billion industry in Broward. So let's recap. Roughly, 
how many boats are sold during the boat show? So again, with inventory problems and stuff, we're selling out now 24 months, 30 months. Wow. So there's stuff that actually happened, obviously, at the show. I know a couple 35-meter Ocean Alexanders, one was at the show sold. I know Westport sold stuff. I know Bob Dennison. I know Carmine Galati from all those firms. When you look at a Carmine Galati or a Steve Moynihan, as an example, HMY and, and Galati Yacht Sales, right. we always think of car dealers, and they'll say, oh, Rick and Rita have got nine dealerships or whatever or whatever they are today, 16, and wonderful people, right? Give right. back to the community. The same thing with these multiple dealerships that are privately owned, they're the same size and scope of a car business, without question. Just the sheer size of these boats being sold is amazing. I mean, that's, that's what we see, the activity. When you walk the energy, the positivity, the, the upbeatness, or, uh, all through the boat show, you know, walk the, I walked the boat show two or three days of the boat show, it was fabulous, I mean, it really was. Well, again, whether you're an Uber driver, cab driver, restaurant worker, hotel owner, you ask Mike Wendeth, how was Riverside Hotel? Sold Pretty out good, several yeah, nights. Yeah. Exactly. All those restaurants and right. stuff. And people are coming here because they know they can be safe. They're vaccinated. They're going out. And we're not burdening them with un, un, uh, unnecessary requirements to enjoy the outside. Because, again, the boat show is an outside event. That plus all the residual value that you mentioned with the hotels, restaurants, and all, all everybody who's impacted, whether it's the FBO, the airport, whatever it is. You know, I got to tell you, Phil, this is an amazing part of our town. It's part of the fabric of Fort Lauderdale, and I want to congratulate you on a very successful boat show in 2021, and we look forward to having it here many, many, many years. Thank you so much. Ed, thank you. Appreciate it. Couldn't have done it without the city of Fort Lauderdale and Broward County support. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Ed.